So by the end of this video, you're gonna have all of the information that you'll need in order to shoot your camera in manual mode. And this is gonna mean two pretty awesome things for you. One, you're gonna be able to take your camera and create the kind of video and photos using the settings that you wanna see and not rely on the weird algorithms half-baked in your camera. And two, what I'm gonna show you here will not only work with your camera, but also on every single camera ever created. Yep, all of them. Are you ready? Then let's go. Okay, so when we are talking about controlling a camera manually, we are essentially talking about three basic functions, and that is aperture, shutter, and ISO. Now, all three of these functions have one big thing in common. Each one of them, on their own, can make your image brighter, or they can make your image darker. And this is really nice, because that means anytime you're in a situation where your photo or video is too bright or too dark, you can use any one of them, or a combination of all three, to adjust the exposure to exactly where you want it to be. Okay, let's dig into this, and I think we're gonna start with, uh... Aperture. So aperture is literally just the hole in your lens that lets light through it and into your camera. And the aperture adjustment is making that hole in the lens bigger or smaller, and by doing that, you are controlling the amount of light, like the volume of light coming into your camera. And so, of course, you know, the bigger the hole is in your lens, the more light that that lens can let through. And the smaller you make the aperture, the less light is available to come into your camera. And aperture is measured in what's called f-stops. And there are some common numbers like f1.4 and f2.8 and f4, 5.6, that kind of thing. And you don't necessarily need to memorize all that now. The main thing that you need to know is that the lower the aperture number, the larger the hole in the lens is. So this one here, this lens, the maximum, the very largest this aperture can go is f2.8. And as I increase that number, the hole in the lens gets smaller. So we'll go from 2.8, that's all the way wide open, and then f4, f5.6, f8, f11, and so on and so forth. Now the creative aspect of using aperture is being able to control something called depth of field. And being able to control this is typically my top reason for shooting in manual. When you're controlling depth of field, you're deciding how out of focus it will be behind your subject and in front of your subject. And so with a really wide open lens, like what, what I'm using right now on this camera, I've decided that I want the background to be pretty blurry because it's kind of busy back there and I didn't really want people to be focusing on the mess over that way. And same with out in front too. If I put my hand in front of the focus point, it's pretty blurry as well. So that's with the wide open aperture on this particular lens. Now, if I were to start closing down the aperture, making that hole in the lens smaller, I'll show you what happens. There, so now I've closed down the aperture a fair amount. So now, you know, in the foreground, my hand's not as blurred out and in the background, that's not as blurred out either, and you can start to see more of the mess back there. Let's change it back. That's better. Oh, much better look. I definitely love like the wide aperture, blurred background kind of look and feel. So a wide aperture lets in a ton of light, and it also gives you that nice thin depth of field. Whereas if you close the aperture down, you're letting in less light, and more of the background in the foreground is going to be in focus. All right, moving on to shutter. Now remember, I'm going through the basics of these three things now, and then we're gonna combine them in a little bit and really show you the power of shooting manually on your camera. All right, so shutter. Now that the light has passed through your lens and the aperture within the lens, it's now going into your camera body. The next thing that light is gonna run into is your shutter, or shutter curtain as it's sometimes called. And in manual mode, you get to decide exactly how long that shutter curtain is open for before it closes again. And under normal photographic or video circumstances, shutter speeds are measured and shown in fractions of a second. So half of a second, 50th of a second, 1,000th of a second, 8,000th of a second. And on the other end of things, if you're going for like really long exposures, like if you had your camera on a tripod and you wanted to get beautiful starry sky and you wanted to just let in as much light for as long as possible, you're talking like one second or two seconds or 10 seconds, you know, 30 second long exposures. But when we're talking about day-to-day -day photography of like people or action or anything going on, you're more in the faster end of the spectrum for shutter speeds. Now on the exposure side of things, a faster shutter speed makes for a darker exposure and a slower shutter speed or a longer shutter speed makes for a brighter exposure, which makes total sense because the longer your shutter is open, the more light is coming through and onto that image sensor. Now, if we're talking more the creative uses for shutter, a faster shutter speed can freeze the action from a skier flying by to an F1 car. That image and all of its detail can be 100% tack sharp with a really fast shutter speed. Whereas on the other end of things, a slower shutter speed can show movement when you want to. All right, folks, we are at the last stop on the line here. So the light has gone into your lens and you've decided how much light gets to go through and into your camera body. And then you've decided how long you want that amount of light to go through your shutter. And now it is hitting 
that image sensor. And that is where ISO comes in, or as some people call it, ISO. <laughs> They're wrong. Whew. So ISO does one thing. It controls how sensitive your image sensor is to light. So on your image sensor is where the image is actually captured. And if you're using a film camera, this is where the light actually hits the piece of film. So a lower ISO number means that the sensor is less sensitive to light, and a higher ISO number means that it's more sensitive to light. Here, I'll show you actually on this camera itself. Okay, so we're gonna go to a lower ISO. We've gone from 800 down to 100, so a lot darker there. Now we're gonna go back up to 800, which is the exposure that I want, but we can go higher than that. And as we make the image sensor more sensitive to light, well, it gets a lot freaking brighter, doesn't it? So I, I like to think of the ISO setting as kind of the enabler. And what I mean by that is, is that it enables you to use the settings that you wanna use for aperture and for shutter. So for example, if I wanted a wide open aperture like I have right now to have that nice blurry background, well, that's a ton of light coming in. And so you don't need as much light sensitivity for your image sensor. And so you could bring that ISO down. Or if it was nighttime when there isn't a lot of light, we can bump the ISO or the image sensor sensitivity up so that we can still get the kind of exposure we want, even with a lot less light going around. Now there is one side effect from changing that ISO around on your camera, and that is noise or graininess to the image. So, so how we're shooting right now is a very clean ISO. It's a lower ISO on my camera. And so the lower the ISO that you have set on your camera, the cleaner and more generally high quality the image will be. Whereas if you start juicing up that ISO, you're basically pushing the gain of that image sensor. And eventually you're gonna to start to see graininess or artifacts and things like that. Here, I'll show you. I'll, I'll crank it up, but adjust the exposure for the high sensitivity. There, now this is, so I went from a very clean ISO on this camera, which happened to be ISO 800. It's not super important, but I went from that all the way up to 25,600 ISO. And you can see I've got roughly the same exposure. It's maybe a little touch brighter, but there's a lot of noisiness going on. A lot of sort of digital visual noise going on. And so in general, you wanna be aiming for the lowest ISO that you can when you're taking images or videos. Okay, that's better. Back to a nice clean ISO. And so for most cameras, their base ISO, their sort of cleanest, highest quality ISO will be around ISO 100 or ISO 160, and it just goes up from there. Okay, so now it's time to put all that knowledge of aperture, shutter, and ISO together to go and make some cool looking images. So we're gonna take a portrait of Degju. We're at Degju's place now, and uh, he wants a nice Christmas portrait of himself. So when we're talking about portraits, we really wanna isolate the subject because it's really about the person. It's not necessarily totally about the surroundings, it's more about the face. And with maybe a little bit of Christmassiness in the background too, we've got that tree right there. Personally, when I'm thinking about portraits, um, I'm immediately thinking about where my aperture is at. And for my kind of style for portraits, I wanna have my aperture as large as possible, as wide open as possible. And on this particular lens, that's 1.4. And that's gonna give me a really nice blurred out background. And the reason why we wanna blur out the background is because we don't want the focus to be on all of that in the back. We want it just on Degju's face, really. All right, so I'm just gonna leave the settings on this camera where they were for my last shot. And it was a landscape shot, and it was pretty dark outside, and I didn't have a tripod. And so anyways, that's where my settings are at. It's at like F8 right now. We're at 25,600 ISO, super high ISO. Let's just see how it looks. Okay. Not bad, the lighting on his face is pretty good. We've actually got ourselves pretty close to a window and a window behind him too. So the light is nice, but it's just really busy in the background. And I know um, those little tiny Christmas tree lights, I know that when those blur out, they can look really great. And so we're gonna open the aperture wide up and adjust the other controls on the camera to accommodate for that. Okay, we're just gonna skip back to the studio real fast so I can show you in real time as I'm changing the settings with this nice little camera filming camera rig. Okay, here we go. So these are the settings I had when I took that first shot of Degju, and you can see that we've got F8 for aperture, which is much too small of an aperture for, this, for the kind of portrait shot that I wanna get, if you ask me. We're at 1 60th of a second. That's perfectly fine for, for taking a portrait. But well, then we're at ISO 25,600, which is really high up there. So you're gonna get some serious grainy digital noise there. Okay, so our initial creative choice here is wanting to blur out the background. So we are going to change aperture first. And I'm gonna open it all the way up to 1.4. We know that's where we want our aperture to be, but now clearly, there's a problem, it's way too bright. We're letting in so much more light now that we've opened up that aperture and we're gonna have to do something about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start bringing down that ISO because that ISO is very high up there. 
So here we go. We're going to bring it down well, to about 800 ISO. Yep, that looks pretty good. 1 60th of a second for shutter is great. That's a nice hand holdable shutter speed. You're not gonna get any weird blur for like, you know, just taking a portrait of a person. So we've got wide open aperture at 1.4. We got shutter speed at 1 60th of a second and ISO 800. Let's see what it looks like. Nice. Okay, so that looks way, way better for this purpose, for taking a portrait and having all the focus be on the person while bringing in a little bit of context. And the context in this case is some Christmas cheer with that tree in the back. Okay, so for our next example, I want to freeze some action. And so of course we're talking about the shutter now. So we are trail side. Here's Beth, she's all geared up again. It's really freaking cold out. Beth, uh, she was going out for a ride and she said, hey, why don't we get a couple shots for the gram? And I said, who the hell is Graham? There's a little bit of a mellow corner here and I wanna get Beth kind of ripping around that and I wanna freeze all the action. And so to do that, we're gonna need a fast shutter speed. All right. <laughs> Got the nice Ninja Turtle gloves going on. They are necessary today. So Beth is gonna go by using the settings I already had on the camera and we'll just see how that goes. Cool. Okay, so that didn't look great. Um, there wasn't really any stopped motion or there wasn't any sort of like cool motion blur. It was just sort of like a blah sort of shot. So let's change some settings and try it again. Okay, so let's change up some settings. And yes, I am back at the studio because it was just way too cold to do this setup out there that day. These are the settings that I had on the camera for that first shot. And it didn't look all that great, mostly because of the shutter speed. And the shutter speed is shown right here, shown as 1 250th of a second. And the next one over is our aperture, F4. And then over here is obviously our ISO. I know from my personal experience with shooting a lot of mountain biking, I know that if I want to freeze the action of a mountain bike going normal speeds, I'm going to want the shutter speed to be around one thousandth of a second. So let's do that. So we've changed that, but now things are looking pretty dark. We know for sure that we want to lock in our shutter speed somewhere around a thousandth of a second. That was our sort of creative choice for this. And aperture is around F4, which I kind of want because I do want a fair amount in focus and I don't want to miss focus on the rider. So I'm gonna keep that at F4. And so now the only way that I can change my exposure is by going into ISO. So on this camera, you can go like this and we are gonna bring this up to an exposure where it makes sense. I think about 3200 ISO. That looks like a good exposure to me. One thousandth of a second for the shutter speed, nice fast shutter speed, F4 for the aperture to get a fair amount in focus and ISO 3200 to get that exposure just right. My hands. Now we've frozen the action using fast shutter speed, but I really want to convey the sense of motion in this one. And so now we're going to use a slow shutter speed and we're going to do this really cool thing called a pan shot and photographic perfection. And there we go. Yet another example of just using aperture shutter and ISO together to create essentially limitless creative possibilities with your camera. Well, okay, folks, that is it. That is aperture, shutter, ISO, all the main functions of shooting your camera manually. And now it's on you to go and practice. I recommend taking one setting at a time, just, you know, rolling the dial and changing the aperture to see what that does for depth of field, or, you know, chasing your cat around the house and trying different shutter speeds. I can tell you what all the settings do, but it really comes down to you as the photographer to put these things in practice. And that's what gets it locked in your head forever. That's it for this camera tutorial. Subscribe if you want to see more, because we've got more coming, as long as a lot of really cool tech reviews coming up as well. I'm going to be down in the comments answering people's questions for the next few days. So make sure you put your question down if you have any. And we will see you on the next one, everybody. Cheers.